Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Schneider's Golf. My name is Eric Schneider, and today we're going to be talking about this Napa style putter that I've just finished up making for my grandfather. It's his 92nd birthday, and so he needed a really cool putter. This is the style of putter that he's used for several years. He really likes this kind of putter, and we decided he needed a Schneider signature putter. Let me tell you a little bit about my grandfather, and then we'll get into the build video. So our golf journey began in Bern, Switzerland, where my great-grandfather, Ernie Schneider Sr., was born. At a young age, him and his mother and some siblings moved to Ogden, Utah, right next to the Ogden Golf and Country Club that is still running and active and has members. This is the modern day Ogden Golf and Country Club from Google Maps. You'll notice Riverdale Road here. Here's the road that comes up into Washington Terrace and then the road where you enter into the Country Club. And you can see the trees and everything here. Here's a picture taken from the same angle. My family has a bunch of these old pictures of early Ogden and they're quite a treasure. This is my great-grandfather, Ernie Schneider Sr. caddying as a boy. And this is him as an adult. His early life was helping his mom out with the bills by being a caddy at the country club. He obviously learned how to play golf because he was around it. Grew a love for the game and the people and the patrons at the Ogden Country Club. Ernie Sr. was a family man. He loved his family. Eventually he had my grandfather, Ernie Jr. Ernie Jr. followed in his father's footsteps, loved playing golf, won a lot of golf tournaments, and together they decided that they wanted to go into business and try their hand at running their own golf course. They had a lot of friends who couldn't afford a membership at the country club, so they bought some land and began their venture in golf course ownership. He and his father were partners. To pay for this old cattle land that was down in the riverbed of Riverdale, they had to play in golf tournaments. So they would play in golf tournaments to pay for the loan, and then they would work at the golf course to build the golf course and drum up business for the patrons. They would mow the grass, had to buy a tractor. They only had a couple, you know, humble greens mowers, a couple little tea mowers, and that's how they grew their golf course. It turned into a thriving business with a lot of patrons, and many of them are still around today. And they paid for their loan by playing good golf. My grandpa Ernie talks about how he had to play good golf or he couldn't make the loan payments. So he had a lot of stress as a young man. He would go and play in golf tournaments while my great-grandfather Ernie Sr. would run the course. My great-grandfather Ernie Sr. tragically died at a young age, and that left my grandpa Ernie to leave his golf career and focus on running the business. And that's how we ended up with Riverside and The Bluff, our two courses that we own and operate to this day. All right, let's hop right into the build video. I began making this putter with a huge piece, a huge block of 303 stainless. And there was a lot to cut away here. A lot of chips. I began by roughing out the profile. And I've never used this big of a block of stainless. There was a lot of waste material, but it was really the only way to get the putter head with the hosel integrated the way that I wanted to do it used a quarter inch ball end mill to dial in the edges to smooth out the hosel and get rid of the adaptive clearing lines. The front side ended up really nice. Hosel blended well and then it was time to clear out the cavity for the Damascus to set down in.
Okay, so op one of my grandpa's putter, his birthday putter, is finished. And now I need to make the Damascus face insert that's gonna go inside of his putter. So I have the Damascus here, and it's just kind of a long blank. It's got some pretty cool textures on it. And I wanna try and harvest this spot right here if I can. Uh, I'm gonna take my end mill and I'm gonna slowly whittle down into this. I'm gonna leave a couple little tiny tabs that I'll cut off later on so that it fits perfectly down into here. I'm gonna leave this in the vise, and then once we get this done, I'm just gonna make sure that this fits over here and make sure that we're good to go on our face. So let's go ahead, we're gonna cut the Damascus and get it ready to put into the face of the putter. Let's see if this fits here. We just pulled it out of the vise. See, it should fit right down in here. I like it. That looks pretty good. I am very happy. All right, this is kind of what we've got. We got her all polished up. Here's uh, the face cut out, shaft hole. That'll have a shaft in it and a ferrule. And uh, it looks pretty sweet. I'm pretty pumped on it. it. Says Ernie right here. My grandpa's name is Ernie. And so this is his putter that I'm making for him. All right, well we got grandpa's putter done. The bad news is it's about a week late. So he's getting his putter a little bit late, but it was worth the wait because it turned out very, very well. Um, take a look at it. We got red paint fill on there. Got a little hosel. Uh, we blended the neck up into the same slant as the hosel, which was kind of a trick because uh, if you remember, we started with a huge block of stainless and we ended up with this little tiny head. So the weight feels pretty good. This is about how it hangs. Lots of toe hang, obviously, because it's got a big, long head on it. Weight's clear up here on the back of the shaft. Not a whole ton of offset. Um, the Damascus face, I ended up trying to passivate it in some passivating solution, and it took all of my torch burn off of it. So I didn't think that went through very well, but it still looks really, really good. The face has a really cool contrast. Were I to do it again, I think I would probably leave it in the acid to etch a little longer. The way it is now, it's sanded flat and so it's not going to screw up the putt. Learned a lot from this one. Let's hit a few putts with this and see how it feels. Not my style of putter, but uh, my grandpa loves this style. So hopefully he'll enjoy it and let's see if I can make a few putts with it. Woof. What do you think? What a treasure. <laughs> what a treasure, huh? Isn't that cool? You see that? Yeah. Got your name on it. Look at that. An Ooh. Ernie, an Ernie special. Yeah. Go hit it. Let's see. For a special yeah. Ernie. Isn't that the kind of fire you like? It is. It is. It is. It is. See, mine had a rounder. Oh, did it? Okay. So Nicholas cut it off like this. Oh, did he? Okay. Right there. Knock it in there. There it is. 
There it is. It just needed to warm up a little. Just like that. Beautiful. Nice putt. All right. Well, that is the Ernie Schneider putter build. Hope you learned something new. Uh, what a fun putter. What an honor to make this for my grandpa. Hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about our history here, our legacy, and the golf courses that really my grandpa built and that my dad and myself have been able to continue to run. Uh, my grandpa is still with us, 92 years old and ticking like a clock. So most people that golf in Utah know my grandpa. If you're not from Utah, hope you'll come and visit us sometime. Get out and play some golf here at Schneider's Bluff or Schneider's Riverside. Take care and I'll see you next time.